Marcus, how's your trade going? Hey, Sean, what's up? Hey, how's it going? Uh, markets are a little bit red today. Has is the trade yeah. uh, your trade hurting? It's uh, it's really red. One sat is one sat. One Bitcoin is one Bitcoin. So um, yeah, some cheap sats uh, on the horizon right here. <laughs> hey, yeah. Did you get to stack some sats? I was actually that I had FOMO once I saw it drop under the. 30,000 euro mark. I was like, okay, now I have to dip into my uh, emergency budget and uh, stack this dip before it bounces. Stacking the dips. I I, uh, I also stacked a little bit. I don't have a ton of dry powder, so, uh, but I did stack a little bit of this dip. Which is... That's that's the, the truly painful, like you don't have any significant <laughs> dry powder to really benefit from these dips, but hey, you know, it's, dips happen every day. The one is bigger than the other. And uh, yeah, they come and they go. So, yeah. What's the, the worst is when you stack the dip and the dip keeps on dipping. That's the worst. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh, welcome, everybody. This is Bitcoiners Guide, the show that we wish we would have had when we first started learning about Bitcoin. So we made it for you. We're your hosts, Big Sean Harris and Plan Marcus in the building. Uh, just a timestamp and price stamp. Today is Monday, May 9th, 5.20 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. It's pretty late for, for Marcus tonight, um, but he's staying up with us. The current Bitcoin price is $30,000, $30,933. So that's about a negative 9% in the last 24 hours. Uh, we are seeing a lot of things going on right now, and we just wanted to jump right in to the Bitcoiner's Guide tip of the week, just the tip. And we're going to start off going over what is a liquidity trap. I think this would be uh, very apropos for what's going on today. So uh, this, is, this is something a little bit outside of Bitcoin. Uh, this is more on what's, you know, a, a normal investing term. So why not go to Investopedia? You know, that's a good place to go. So what is a liquidity trap? A liquidity trap, in more or less words, is a contradictory economic situation in which interest rates are very low and saving rates are high, rendering monetary policy ineffective. Okay, th those are big words. Uh, what does this really mean? A liquidity trap normally happens uh, in times like in March of 2020, uh, or in any in any time where you see a big turn down in in the markets. Uh, it's when the the thing that has the most demand is the U.S. dollar. So that just means people are selling their stocks, they're selling bonds, they're selling anything that they have, their gold, their Bitcoin and they're getting into the dollar. Uh, a lot of times this happens when, when there is, uh, when people are scared, they think that there will be a negative event on the horizon. And uh, a lot of that could be happening right now. I mean, there's certain things that are, that are, that are making uh, this negative downturn. There's not only a, you know, a negative 9% in, in Bitcoin, uh, there's been a big dip in Bitcoin. There's also been a big dip uh, in stocks, the whole stock market. Uh, the S&P 500 hit a 52-week low, which is pretty crazy to think about. And we'll talk about that later on in this show. Uh, but more than anything, just to, to be able to wrap your mind around what's going on with Bitcoin's price. Uh, is there turmoil just in Bitcoin or is it anywhere else? Well, if you think, if you look back to... Uh, Q1 of this year of 2022, uh, the U.S. economy actually shrank 1.4%. Uh, and so that means uh, what a recession is, is when you have two quarters, consecutive quarters, where the U.S. economy shrinks, then that actually constitutes as a recession. So uh, we could be in the middle of a recession and not even know it yet. Uh, we'll have to wait until Q2 numbers come out in the middle of the summer. Uh, but when you have uh, the first quarter shrinkage of uh, the economy plus 
uh, rate hikes from the Fed, uh, the markets will turn down because of that. And when they turn down, a lot of people are selling uh, their, their stocks, their assets, whatever they can sell. And um, the, famous, the famous Greg Foss talks about this a lot. And, and he says, you know, when there's cascading sales going on, you don't sell what you want, you sell what you can. And I think that's, uh, that could be going on right now uh, with, with Bitcoin's price. There could be a liquidity trap. And this is pretty normal. Bitcoin has been very volatile. So if you're scared, if you're wondering what's going on with Bitcoin's price, uh, don't worry about it. This is pretty normal uh, in, in the history of Bitcoin. Uh, Mark, Marcus, what's, what have been your thoughts on, on the liquidity trap or just the overall Bitcoin price so far? Yeah, well said again. Um, liquidity trap, I don't think I have much to add uh, what you added already. Yeah, I guess uh, when the markets turn down and people start incurring losses and they need to sell stuff to cover their losses, uh, that means the prices fall more. And like you said, it has like this domino or cascading effect. And um, yeah, that could be part of it. You know, the other theory goes that, um, you know, a lot of people also look at like, is the, are most people long or short, right? So if people open a lot of longs on exchanges, they can be liquidated if the price drops really far. And that's always good for somebody. <laughs> yeah. Um, so who knows? It's a, it's a, it's a big world. Uh, Bitcoin is completely open to all players. Uh, big and small. Some people are way over leveraged. We also had, uh, but I think you're going to talk about that still. I was going to mention the Luna. That's uh, that's playing. Yeah, that's getting a lot of attention. So yeah, I don't. I honestly don't know. It's just you know, I look at the I look at the graph. It, it reminds me a little bit of what we saw in 2018 and also what we saw in 2020. You know, these big drops. Um, and they're sudden, they're fast, and they can be deep, and they can be really painful. And the best thing to do is just do not panic because <laughs> you don't want to be selling like the bottom, which is probably like, you know, like those two moments I mentioned, 2018, 2020, those turned out to be like the best buying opportunities on, on the Bitcoin price chart in the past four to six years. So uh, we might be in one of those moments uh, this week or, you know, like this week or maybe next week or maybe tomorrow or maybe yesterday, who knows? It's... Um, Seems like a pretty significant moment. We're dropping really far. We're pushing against the 30,000, you know, which has been tested about eight or nine times since um, what was the what was the day January uh, 2020 that we went through yeah. first or 2021. 2021. Yeah, you're right. So yeah, it's a pretty significant level. If we drop below that, then it's basically just like you know nothing but air under the graph. You know, if you look at it from it like a technical point of view, which doesn't say anything. You know, in all in all fairness, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, you hear people calling 20K, 10K. Honestly, I'll be surprised if we break 30K. And if we break 30K, I, I don't see us under 30K for like more than a couple of days, to be honest. I can't see a prolonged Bitcoin price under 30K at this, at this moment. But I've been proven wrong a lot in the past as well. So don't listen to me because I'm just nobody as well. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and this is one of the things too, is in, in a liquidity trap, whether it's with Bitcoin and stocks and assets, whatever, um, you just, you know, if you're forced to sell, you have to sell, right? And that's what happens to a lot of people who, who they use leverage, just like you were saying, Marcus, they get margin called and they have to sell. Uh, but if you're just stacking Bitcoin, you're stacking, sats you stay in humble you don't have to worry about selling and, and i think that's the biggest thing is yeah the, the the everyone would have loved to have called the top and sold the top and then bought back in at the bottom but no one can you know in hindsight it's always easy to be like oh yeah that was the top this was the bottom but when it, when you're in the middle of it you have no idea you know, are we in the top of the market are we in the bottom of the market so that's just part of that Bitcoin Zen. You just got to sit back and relax, kick your feet up, stack when you can stack, um, put it into cold storage and, and don't worry about trading or missing out on, oh, I could have had this much Bitcoin if I would have waited to buy or if I would have sold this. And, you know, I think that's the biggest thing is, is to not worry about that so much and to more worry about the fundamentals, um, you know, 
for the last few weeks, we kept saying, yeah, Bitcoin keeps sitting around 40,000. Now it's at around 30,000. So I think, you know, no one can call, call, make these, make these trading calls. A lot of people have tried, a lot of people have failed. The best thing is to, to just hold on, ride these, ride these dips. And as you, and as you ride these dips, it gives you the, the diamond hands to, uh, to ride it back up. Uh, we've so, all seen we've all seen the memes, right? You know, like where Bitcoin is a roller coaster, or it's yeah. like this obstacle race where you have to climb up a mountain, and there's like pits, and there's valleys, and there's like highs and lows. And so, coming into Bitcoin, there's no way you don't know it's volatile, right? Because that's the first thing. So we know this volatility is coming. Yes, when it drops this deep, that feeling of loss gets extra intensified right because that what if question comes up like what if i just sold over there but he didn't know if we were going to go lower or we would have gone up by this same percentage so and you know the real the real value proposition is in the long term so that's that's what we bitcoin is really about you know we talked about this low price time preference um, attitude you need to have that's where the value is in you know like you're buying this for the long term for for generations to come and yeah, if the price dips within a year or within a month or within a week or even in a day, it's just noise, you know, like just shut it out. Yeah, it's easier, said than, it's easier said than done. And it does test <laughs> your conviction, I'm sure. I'm seeing all the memes <laughs> on Twitter, they're great. But um, yeah, I mean, fundamentally, what's changed, Sean? I mean, yeah, we're probably talking like macro economy then, but you know, when you just look at Bitcoin itself, nothing has changed fundamentally over the past week or two or even months. Yeah, and I think that's the biggest thing is, is the fundamentals of Bitcoin are still the same. You know, tick tock, another block every 10 minutes. I think that's the biggest thing to, to pay, attention, pay attention to. There's more adoption. There's more people learning about Bitcoin. Prices created at the margins. Don't worry so much about the short-term dips or even the gains, because a lot of times uh, people hold through the dips and then, and then when it goes back up, then they sell it, not realizing that they're selling a future piece of, of the future money, of what will be money. So I think that's, that's a hard part too, is to keep, keep holding, even if you feel like you've made a lot of money, whatever that means to you. So, you know, there's a lot of people that wanted to buy at 69K, but now that it's at 30K, they're, they're, they're rethinking, right? Should I be buying or what? I would, you know, and again, we're, we've never been financial, you know, financial advisors or whatever, but if you've liked it at 69K, you should definitely like it at 30K. This is, I mean, it's on sale and that's, that's how we look at it. What I'm, what I'm pretty excited about too, or excited is maybe not the right word, but what do you, what do you think is happening this time around? I mean, we've seen so much uh, of the altcoins going up as well in the, in, the, in the last two years. There's still quite a bit of uh, market cap there. We had the NFTs. So there's like this massive new wave of, basically new crypto users, if you will, that, that came into the space since 2020, 21. And they're now seeing for the first time a downside, like a, you know, like a bigger downturn. What's your, what's your thoughts on that? Because it makes me pretty bullish, to be honest, because that's exactly the moment when I started to dig a little deeper and then I realized, hey, you know, maybe it's, a, it's, it's time to read the white paper of Bitcoin or something and try to see what, what, what this thing is really about. Yeah, I think these are the times when a lot of new Bitcoin maximalists uh, will, or Bitcoiners, we should even just call, I like the term Bitcoiners. Uh, Bitcoin maximalists is fine too. But this is the time when you see a lot of Bitcoiners that are, that are created, which is, you know, the people that they, they bought all these altcoins, they bought NFTs because they thought, okay, you know, Bitcoin is obviously there's something there, but it's, it's way too big of a price. So uh, I, I'm going to have unit bias and I'm going to buy this Dogecoin that's one cent or whatever. I'm going to buy this Shiba coin that's a half of a cent and I can buy a million of those. And so I think that's the difference is when they see that 
that there's not much in these other altcoins, that there's no true use case. It's not solving anything like Bitcoin is solving uh, inflation and the corruption of central banks. I think that's the biggest thing that, that you see is you start to understand what Bitcoin is in itself and you make that distinction between Bitcoin and crypto and Bitcoin and NFTs and Bitcoin and anything else. So that's, that's what I think a lot of people are going to start seeing. And uh, when Bitcoin goes down, normally the altcoins go down harder and faster and they never regroup. So this will be, this will be fun to see, you know, what Bitcoiners are minted from, uh, from this May dip of 2022. That's right. And talking about unit bias, with this dip, $1 buys you a little more than 3,000 sats, 3,046 sats. So if you like big numbers, get yourself some sats. Yes, sir. Okay, that's, uh, that's all for the Bitcoiners Guide Tip of the Week. Let's get into the news of the week. Uh, we have a little tweet out here from Naib Ukele. Just gonna share this real quick. And he said, uh, just a little, a few hours ago, El Salvador just bought the dip. 500 coins at an average USD price of $30,744. Bitcoin. Look at that. El Salvador is buying dips out here. But when you see people reacting like this, what 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 does that show you, Marcus? <laughs> yeah. People like this reacting like this. I mean, Najib is not exactly just people, right? I mean, it's a pretty significant yeah. character. Well, a guy yeah, like Najib uh, well, yeah. well, awesome for him that he got to stack the dip. I'm, I'm really happy. 500 coins, a good amount for a small country like that. Uh, I do still wonder always like, okay, who's who's holding the keys? You know, like, <laughs> how are they buying? Yeah. Pretty, uh, so I have a, some small concerns there, but in general, dude, like the guy knows what he's doing and, uh, you know, he, he, he gets the full benefit of the doubt from me until uh, proven otherwise. Yeah, it doesn't like seem that like, dip, you know, it's, uh, yeah. It doesn't <laughs> seem like he's worried, you know, there's, I think the biggest thing is that everyone, when you, when you first get into Bitcoin, the pressure around him is probably going to be worrying, but, so um, yeah. When you first get into it, everyone tells you, oh, well, it could all go to zero. And uh, so you see something like that on a big dip like this, and you go, okay, well, he seems to be doing just fine. He bought the dip. He didn't, uh, yep. he didn't panic sell. Nope. Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna take a while. El Salvador is probably gonna be ridiculed for, uh, especially in the coming weeks, you know, you're gonna get characters like Peter Schiff and Steve Hanke. They're going to be like, oh, he's so irresponsible. And the IMF will probably add on to that as well. But um, yeah, it's all about that long game. And I think the long game is going to be very satisfying to read the news articles uh, and make the memes around that time. It'll oh, be yeah. a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's going to have so, a lot of haters right we now. Gotta make, we got to make sure to screenshot all these comments they're making right now because we're going to have a lot of fun with those in a couple of years. Yes. You know, Pete, no one better than Pierre Rochard at uh, at digging through the dirt from 2013 when someone made a bad call. <laughs> oh and, yeah, you know, he was he's the best of that. So another reaction. Uh, I, I I I like going through these because it just gives you an idea of how people who really understand what Bitcoin is, what are they thinking about, right? Like, what are their <laughs> thoughts? Obviously, the president of El Salvador. He's buying more. Michael Saylor, he's just trolling. He's having a good time. Yeah. You know, the tools are going to get to him. So he's trolling back. The McDonald's hat's got to come back on. Even though, you know, real Bitcoiners, sorry, Michael, you know, like we support Tahini's, right? Put on that Tahini's hat. First <laughs> Bitcoin company, first fast food chain in Canada that went on a complete Bitcoin standard. We support Tahini's. Ali, the man, <laughs> let's go. Yeah. Shout out to Tahini's. Uh, but it's a great it's a great meme though right i mean it's so relatable to so many people out there who are just slaving away every day in their day job you know for some dirty fiat you know and we're all being kept down you know our raises are not being our wages are not being raised as much as the inflation is going up so 
everybody's struggling, getting that extra McDonald's job, you know, and just hustling, turning that dirty fiat into Bitcoin because we know in the long term that is our real retirement plan. So uh, there's no, uh, yeah, it's a great meme. I, uh, it's fantastic. Yeah, I love this today. <laughs> just that, you know, it's Monday morning, time to get back to work. Bitcoin, right? So he'll do whatever to stack more stats. And I think that's, that's the right mentality. It, especially when the price goes down, this is when it's like stacking central. When you go hard. That's where you. <laughs> that's when you should take out a loan and get some. No, don't listen to me. Never take out a loan. <laughs> we'll, get in, we'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, Grow some balls right. and get yourself some Bitcoin. What are you even doing, man? <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like, okay, I'm in the off season. Maybe I should uh, start driving Uber. Or uh, <laughs> door dash. You know what it is? Like the, the haters will literally come at you at the coffee machine the next day and like, oh, Bitcoin dropped. Eh? They're looking like with a big smile for your reaction, hoping to see the pain. You know? And they're not even thinking about buying. But when Bitcoin is making all time highs and they shouldn't be buying, they're, then they're asking the question like, oh, oh, is it a good time to buy? No, well, they, you know, now is a good time to buy, but no way in, <laughs> in it should in still be buying. Homes, they're gonna they're gonna buy Bitcoin when it's dropping like this, but this is the time you want to get your friends and family in. Yeah. Because um yeah, that's it. Another thought, Sean. Sorry to jump from one topic to the next, but uh, you, know, you were showing Michael Saylor just now. But I saw this tweet today, don't get, pin me down on the numbers. I believe it was thirty thousand seven hundred which is micro strategies cost basis at which they acquired you know, your Bitcoin. So that means for the first time now, a sailor is feeling a little. What do you call it? Yeah, like losses that are in the red, not in the black anymore, because he's had the smoothest ride with micro strategy so far. Yeah. Um, yeah. Any thoughts? I think. Um, I think Sailor, he did he did his research before he started buying, and I and I think I mean he did exactly kind of what we're all saying. You know, everyone is saying, "Oh, Sailor could have he should have been just DCAing flat DCAing, or you know he should have held some dry powder for dips and all this stuff." I don't think that he really cares. Obviously, he wants to get as much Bitcoin as he can. And that's like, that's the goal is get as much Bitcoin as you can. But how do you, how do, what's easier, right? Is, is it easier to buy Bitcoin? You buy it at its all time high, it drops 50%. Or you, you buy it at its, all, you like, you buy half at the all time high, you keep half of your cash, and then it, and then it just rips. To double, like it just does 100%. So it goes from 69K to 120K, and you're sitting on the sidelines with half your money. So that's what I think is what's easier. I, you know, I don't know what's easier or what's harder. I think to give you more peace of mind would be let me just buy the Bitcoin. I have money right now, and I don't want to keep it in the dirty fiat. I'm going to switch it over to Bitcoin. I'm going to buy Bitcoin, and whatever happens with the price happens. I'm okay with that instead of being like, instead of, because at that point, if you don't buy all in, then you, then you're playing the role of a trader and you have to figure out when to buy, when, you know, when you're going to, when is it the dip? Is it truly the all time high? Is it going to go higher? Is it going to go lower? So I think if you just buy and hold your Bitcoin, you know, you're going to be fine over the long run. And I think that's why, I think that's why Michael Saylor, he just buys Bitcoin when he gets his money and uh and he sleeps peacefully yeah. at night but people love to trade sean especially when you're just coming in you're like ooh, ooh, yeah if i could cut this out so people are going to trade and um they're going to get wrecked then they're going to learn <laughs> yes and then they're going to figure out okay maybe i should just buy and just keep stacking instead of trying to time same thing with shit coins right at least with bitcoin you know, in the long run, it's going up with shit coins. You're taking on a lot of extra gambling because, you know, it's just going to like run up into one peak and then it just comes down. It'll never come back to that. Well, at least, you know, in like 99% of like those shitcoin graphs, sorry, altcoin graphs, um, 
yeah, you see this one pattern, you know, I call it like a screaming monster. It just goes up, everybody's happy, and then it's like this slow bleed yes. to death. And then even the even the the, the coins like the chain link or something or XRP that's been around for like at least two bull runs now, you know. On on this last bull run, they went up again, yes, you know, and quite quite a bit too, but they never even like surpassed their previous all time high. So it's it's just no. going to be like this diminishing. It's going to remain a gambling game, but with worse and worse odds each time around. That's uh, how I see it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, and you know, speaking of the altcoin sphere, Dylan LeClaire earlier today was he had quite a few tweets. He had a nice thread about Luna and the Luna Foundation Guard. That's LFG. Uh, they also have the the Terra uh, stablecoin and they ended up the LFG reserves wallet containing 42.5 thousand Bitcoin has just been emptied. That was from Dylan LeClaire a few hours ago. Uh, that's and that's, I mean, that's just another thing of if you are in a leverage position and then they may have not been leveraged, but they had to use, they were using their Bitcoin to peg their to peg their stable coin with the dollar. And as Bitcoin is volatile, it goes down, then it makes their stable coin go down. And uh, they ended up having to sell their Bitcoin. So I thought that was, you know, it's just another way. If, if you end up leveraging yourself, putting yourself in a position where Bitcoin's price goes down and is volatile, which it will do because it always has done that. And, it, and there's a chance that it, get, that it might get more volatile then you might have a you might end up with less Bitcoin than what you originally thought you were going to end up with. So it's just another reason why you don't want to trade, you don't want to short Bitcoin, you don't and and uh, because you might end up having to sell. And I think that's just that's just you know the the, the good old saying in Bitcoin: play stupid games, win stupid prizes, and that's what happened with Luna. Yeah. So really quick, Luna. Um is a coin, right? And it's a coin from this Luna Foundation uh, guard. And actually they also have the UST, which is a stable coin with the, with the ticker UST, which is supposed to keep its price pegged to the US dollar. And what's special about it is that it's uh, algorithmically pegged to the dollar. So, what they were trying to do in the past couple of weeks uh, with big announcements, I mean, the big news here, of course, is that that number of Bitcoin there, that's 42.5 thousand Bitcoins. So much. <laughs> that is no small amount. I just did no. the math on it. Like they were buying it last week for like 40,000 per coin. So that's 1.7 billion US dollars in Bitcoin we're talking about here. So this is really a, a massive player that literally bought their Bitcoin last week for like 40K and are now apparently dumping it, or I'm not sure. They, in, in the Twitter feed, they did said they, they were loaning it out and possibly having to sell it. Uh, Dylan LeClaire now is showing that they emptied out the account, whether that's for the loan or whether it's really to sell it. Um, I don't know. It's a big amount. They're big players. And um, yeah, they were trying to have assets, both Bitcoin and cash as, uh, you know, like uh, assets to back their, their UST. And then if, uh, for instance, the dollar price goes up, then the algorithm could like sell off dollars or, or, or sell Bitcoin to, to, to keep that peg. But with the price dropping that fast, they ran into uh, trouble even before they were able to implement it. And now they're, <laughs> um, yeah, not through any algorithm. They're just like centrally controlled uh, selling and trading Bitcoin to cover their ass, basically. So um, <laughs> crazy stuff yeah. going on. I mean, yeah, I, yeah it's crazy. And especially just... in a down market like this, you know, it's it's actually really healthy for the market because it really tests the the healthiness and the robustness of a lot of these 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 companies, you know, these whether it's exchanges or whether it's like these these loaning platforms or other, you know, fancy and innovative new uh, new companies. When when the market tanks and people start withdrawing their coins from exchanges and you know everybody needs to sell their stuff to get liquidity, as you mentioned. 
You know, if you're running like a rehab a rehypothecation uh, uh, program, basically loaning out other people's Bitcoin while they think you're still holding it at the exchange. Once people start asking, demanding their money back and you can't cover your your uh, your position or, you know, what you owe people, that's this is the time when when, yeah, things start to crack and, and the dirty yeah or the, the, the weak <laughs> players will start to show themselves. Yeah, and, and I like I like what you're saying. It's it's necessary because Bitcoin just in these moments it switches hands. It switches hands from the weak hands to the strong hands, and the stackers who just are stacking every day who don't put themselves in a position to get margin called or liquidated. They're not leveraged. Uh, they get to stack more because the price is cheaper. And those who are playing these games of trading and longing or shorting, and they, you know, sometimes you might win, other times, most of the time you lose. And when you lose, guess who comes along and, and, and gets to stack those coins at a cheaper price? It's the, it's the daily stackers, people who just stack their coin every single day or every time they get paid. And so, uh, yeah, you want to get more Bitcoin. But you also want to be smart about how you get it and recognize that Bitcoin is very volatile and that's normal for an asset that's started from nothing and has a total addressable market of the whole financial system. So it's going to be volatile and that's okay. But volatility does not equal risk. And that's just another thing is volatility you know, you see people that that aren't margin called that sell that they're just panic selling because I think it's risky. But there's a difference between between risk and volatility, and uh, the fundamentals are still the same. Great point. It's a nice way of looking at it. It's not risky. It's just volatile. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's true. And it's normal. <laughs> but some people need to hear it. So good one. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, okay, so getting into, we were you and Marcus and I were speaking earlier. You and I were talking earlier before uh, about the possibility of seven consecutive weekly red candles, and that's never happened uh, in the history of Bitcoin before. Maybe uh, would you mind sharing, and, and we could take a look. We're going to jump back into the um, graph again, which we promised we wouldn't do. <laughs> no more problem. yeah if uh, <laughs> i would say look at our last episode we had a nice discussion about this yeah. uh, let me just switch from the daily view to the weekly view where every bar is uh, represents one week i don't know if you can see this in your screen um, yeah yeah so what's what's interesting here is that obviously here we just started the week today is a monday so the week has just started we're just one day into it we have six days and one hour before this candle closes, but we've just had one, two, three, four, five, six consecutive weeks, uh, red weeks. And we're now about to, well, still six days to go, but this would be the seventh weekly uh, close. If we close lower than what was the price here? I have this little pop-up in front of my screen. Um, the low was 33,710. So if we close under 33,710 by Sunday, then we have our seventh red consecutive weekly candle, which is a first in the entire Bitcoin price history because the only th time we had um, six consecutive weeks was here in 2014, September, I believe it was here. We had one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we had two greens and then we still continued down, but this was the longest uh, consecutive red candles weeks never had uh, six before i counted it we had uh, twice uh, five candles um that's it never seven so, yeah. yeah so i think that this could be really interesting to see what happens um and we were also talking about the s p 500 uh that it's also at a it will it's at a very low point as well and uh and you had overlaid that s p 500 with with yeah. Bitcoin price, which was I thought was really interesting to see, because the S and P five hundred right now is at a fifty two week low, and if you think about uh, what's going on right now, is the, the markets uh, have turned down a ton because of 
like what we spoke about earlier um, with the liquidity trap, that there, there's a couple of things at play. You have uh, the first quarter of 2022 is, was, uh, was a contraction. And so a possibility of the first quarter of a recession, plus you have rate hikes that have been going on. We've had two rate hikes so far from the Fed, but the rate hikes are there to battle or combat inflation. And so if you look at what's going on in an overall macro perspective, you have inflation that's running hot while we were sitting on very low interest rates. So that the Fed tries to raise rates, but as they raise rates, then the markets uh, start to turn red. So now the Fed is, is, at a, is at a quandrum right now because they don't know, okay, do we continue to raise rates? Do we walk back the rate hikes because markets are turning red? Or do we keep pushing forward and keep raising rates into a recession? So that's the question that the Fed has to ask themselves. And, and you better believe that the Democrats in these midterm elections, they're gonna want, they're gonna want two things, and it's gonna be hard to get both of them. The two things that they're gonna want is one, lower inflation, which means that the Fed needs to raise rates, but they're also gonna want a good, healthy economy and the markets to do well, which that means that they would have to lower interest rates. So this is kind of the, the issue that the market, that the overall macro uh, perspective is, is seeing right now. Um, and as markets is showing the, uh, the Bitcoin price overlaid with, uh, with the S&P 500. Yeah, I'm trying to get it in a way, um, let's see. Uh, Got it earlier. The thing is, the S and P five hundred is. Um, uh, I think I should put it on the daily. I can zoom out a little bit. Um, yeah, and, and something that's interesting too is, so, uh, Bitcoin has has historically, so so it's historically looked at, been looked at as a risk on asset, and that's just that's just financial talk for. Uh, it's been looked at basically like a stock. Um, stocks are considered, normally have been considered risk on, while bonds have been considered risk off. Uh, and I think we've mentioned this before, but it's always good to, to go over this again, is that the reason why stocks are considered risk on is because if a company goes to zero, uh, you don't really have any claim to your, you know, you don't have any claim to any money, the stock goes to zero. But if a company goes to zero and you have bonds in that company or, or anything of the sort, uh, you have higher priority uh, if you are a bondholder to get paid your money back. So that's historically why bonds have been looked at as risk off while stocks have been looked at as risk on. So because Bitcoin has been looked at as a risk on asset, uh, a lot of times Bitcoin actually does correlate with the stock market. Um, it'll correlate with the stock market and then it'll have some crazy pump uh, and then it'll look like it's uncorrelated or what a lot of people in Bitcoin call it the decoupling. They'll call it decoupling uh, as in decoupling from the stock market trend. It won't be correlated as the stock as S&P goes up and down. It won't go up and down. Um, so there are times when uh, when Bitcoin's price is very correlated to the S&P 500, especially in liquidity traps when everything dumps, normally Bitcoin dumps. And it'll be exciting to see when Bitcoin's overall market cap uh, grows a, a lot more. Uh, I think that's when we'll be able to see the, the quote unquote decoupling, when you'll see the stock market go down in the liquidity crap, liquidity crisis, liquidity trap. <laughs> I said liquidity crap. <laughs> yeah, I heard and uh you know whatever and then you'll see uh you'll see the, the bitcoin price actually decouple from uh from stocks so what are, yeah. what are we looking at right here mark this looks like you got something really good yeah you know the, the thing is bitcoin rises so uh so much faster and higher you know it fluctuates the the, the the ups and downs are so much more intense than uh, the s p 500 so comparing the two kind of hard to both get them on the same screen but what you can hopefully see here and maybe i should just turn off these for a little bit just to make it a little bit 
is here we see the S and P 500, and this is the, the the Bitcoin price action of the of the last period. And what you see here, the S and P like rolling over, actually from here already just correlates with you know the the, the Bitcoin price. And we see that in the past as well, like here in uh, uh, March of 2020. It wasn't just you know uh, Bitcoin that had that uh, fall, of course. It was the the broader market as well. So those kind of types, you see, there's a clear uh, correlation. And what's actually a little bit scary is, uh, and then I'll turn these back on, uh, the moving averages, uh, and I'll just switch to the weekly charts because here we see a timeline from uh, 20. I'll put it from 2021 because or sorry, 2001, you know, with the dot-com bubble. We fell deep below this orange line, which is the 200 moving average, came back up here. There was another crash, you know, the big financial crisis in 2008, 2009. Again, we fell to go through that 200 moving average way below. And then look what kind of a crazy uh, bull run the S&P has been on. Of course, yeah. we had the, uh, the, the, the COVID uh, the uh, um, scare shock to the market again it fell through the 200 moving average but it they, they turned on the money printer so hard but anyway looking at where we are now i mean the market has only just begun rolling over right so if you expect it to at least come back to the 200 moving average um, there's still quite a bit of way to go before she goes that's like another 12 percent in the s p which i know is nothing for bitcoin so do that times <laughs> three or four to see what Bitcoin could boomer, potentially do. Boomers but, freak out uh, on a 12% drop on the S&P 500, but... Uh, oh, yeah. There goes the retirement. So, um, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a pretty pretty weird um, and a little bit, you know, concerning macroeconomic uh, uh, situation we're in, right? Because, let's be honest, Bitcoin was launched in 2009. So we've never seen like a really big financial crisis in Bitcoin's uh, lifetime yet. So what if we're like on the verge of like this bigger correction, right? I mean, and then I'm like, yeah, what am I going to do? Sell my Bitcoin for dirty fiat for the dollar? <laughs> Is that like a better alternative? I don't think so. so do you want to go in gold? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Gold's been kind of flat for like the past 40 years. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not, it hasn't even, yeah, years. gold hasn't even made up for inflation. And then I just think of uh, 21 million Bitcoin, of which probably 6 million are lost or will be lost. And the growing community of Bitcoin is that just keeps stacking. You know, it's going to decouple at some point because there's only so many Bitcoin. And yeah, just be happy with uh, the extra sats you get the stack and uh, it will sort itself out we're we're meant to you know end this kind of craziness because what is happening here right i mean this whole graph has nothing to do with the actual performance of any gdp or that the companies in the us were that great and have you know have improved that much no this is just literally money expansion right so if you correct it for like that monetary expansion, then basically the stock market seems pretty flat. For instance, if you price it in gold or something, it's definitely flat. So yeah, it's just massively distorted. We had this attempt of a correction and then they literally just print like 9 trillion US dollars out of nowhere. And just like, <laughs> it's like uh, shooting NAS into an engine or like uh, <laughs> dope into a, an athlete's body, right? It's just crazy. And, yeah, now they're saying we're going to turn off the money printer. Look what happens, you know, like they've barely even started tightening, right? They've only threatened to, to increase interest rates. They increase with 75 basis points, which is nothing. And the market is just puking immediately, you know, so it's going to be a fun couple of days, weeks to see if the Fed will uh, come with some emergency announcement and, uh, and say, we got to print another $10 trillion, guys. Sorry. <laughs> Don't worry about inflation. It'll be fine. We're just transitory again. I think I think what might end up happening, and you know, you never know what could happen. Uh, but I think what might end up happening is just like I said, right? Boomers have been so used to, and no, and no specific hate towards the boomers. They've been so used to uh, just bull market for a long time, and, and yeah. 
they've, they've had the hiccups along the way. Um, but especially these last, these last 10, 12 years, there's been a big bull market and you have people that are getting close to retirement who do not want to see their stocks lose, lose value. And so I think there's going to be a lot of people clamoring for if there, if there is, you know, another big turndown, a liquidity trap in the markets, uh, there'll be a lot of people, um, a lot of hedge funds that will be clamoring for uh, the, the Federal Reserve to, to not only lower interest rates, but to turn the money printer on. And so I think this will, this will be interesting to see how it plays out, how bad do the markets have to get before the money printer is turned back on. Because like we've seen over the history of the world, the history of the United States, um, besides Paul Volcker, when it's, when it's been a decision between austerity or devaluing or debasement of the currency, almost always do we choose as a country and any fiat currency will choose to debase the currency to artificially pump the prices of the stocks and their assets to make it feel like uh, you're winning. When in reality, you're not, you're not creating anything by printing money, right? You're not changing anything in the real economy. No. Actually, you're just distorting uh, pricing information and, and that kind of stuff. So, but when the stocks go up, even though it's a cheaper dollar, <laughs> we've just become more poor. But look, the prices are up. So we're happy. It's, um, yeah. Yep, exactly. Well, that's, uh, that'll do for today's Bitcoiners Guide. Uh, just remember this Thursday at 7.30 p.m. we go live with BTC Sessions, Ben Sessions. Uh, he's one of the greatest Bitcoin podcasters and the best tutorial giver there is. Uh, he'll join the Mean Factory podcast live on our channel. And remember uh, what you see here, what you hear here, when you leave here, don't just let it stay here. Please like and subscribe. Share this if you found this information helpful or entertaining. And as for Bitcoiners Guide, episode 12 from Plan Marcus and Big Sean, we're over and out. Peace. See you next one.